for today will be IFRS number 15, that's revenue from contracts with customers, right? So we'll start with the effectivity date of the standard. By the way, right, uh, for today, expect that we will only discuss no, the phase of the standard, meaning we will not dwell with the appendices, all right? So don't expect me to discuss the appendices of IFRS number 15. So once again, effectivity date of this standard will be, right, January 1, 2018. Meaning, starting January 1, 2018, all companies are now mandated or are now required to use IFRS number 15. Okay? So if you are using an old book, no, right, with regards to advanced accounting, because this is part of AFAR, right, see to it that you need to buy or to look at for a, a newer reference because apparently if your book is 2015 backwards, medyo hindi na siya kagamit-gamit because I'm sure that if your book is dated 2015 backwards, mo, uh, most likely lumang standard pa rin yan nandiyan. Right? So once again, all companies are now required to use IFRS 15 starting January 1, 2018. So IFRS number 15 supersedes the following standards and interpretations. So medyo marami-rami siyang tinanggalan right, ng power nun, or ng effectivity. All right? So starting January 1, 2018, these standards and these interpretations are, are no longer used. Meaning, hindi na pwedeng gamitin no, itong mga standards and interpretations na to. Starting with IAS number 11. As we all know, IAS 11 talks about construction contracts. So sir, what do you mean by that? Wala na po bang long-term construction contracts sa APAR? No, the answer is no. Meron pa rin po. There is still long-term construction contracts in AFR, but this time, no, we will use IFRS 15 instead of IES number 11. Okay? So, meron pa long-term construction contract. It's just that nagpalit tayo ng standard. From IES 11, nag-shift tayo papunta sa IFRS number 15. Okay? Next is standard na napalitan will be IES number 18 or revenue. Actually, ito yung pinakamalaking impact because with regards to construction contracts, konti lang naman, no? again, konti lang naman yung para bang ano, konti lang yung naging changes. Actually, with regards lang to names. But with regards to franchise accountings, expect na malaki yung pinagkaiba because franchise under IAS 18 is way different than the franchise here in IFRS number 15. So let me give you no, an idea lang kung ano bang nangyayari previously. According to IAS number 18, which is the standard we are using previously, there are two requirements before we can recognize revenue. What are those? First is that uh, these uh, we expect, again, we expect future economic benefits to flow to the entity. And the second requirement is that these benefits can be measured reliably. So as long as we expect right, to receive future economic benefits and these future economic benefits are measurable, revenue can already be recognized under the old standard. But apparently, under the new standard, right, uh, the, the, the rules will now be different because under the new standard, which is IFRS number 15, there are now five steps before we can recognize revenue. Later, we will discuss no, these five steps in order for us to understand more right, uh, when will a company uh, allowed to recognize these revenues. All right? Also, malaki din yung pinagbago pagdating po sa installment sales. Don't get it wrong. Meron pa rin installment sales because we cannot forbid companies to sell uh, their, uh, let's say, inventories on installment. But apparently, wala na yung method. Wala na po tayong installment sales method. All right. So one of the most difficult topics no, here in AFAR Tinanggal, here in IFRS number 15, because installment sales method is purely based on IES number 18. And since IES number 18 is now superseded by IFRS number 15, see to it now that installment sales method is, uh, is no longer applicable or no longer valid. Okay? Now, punta tayo sa next interpretation and that's IFRIC number 13. IFRIC number 13 talks about customer loyalty programs. Okay? So customer loyal, loyalty programs, these are the, uh, let's say, these are one of the of the, of the activities of the company to surge or to increase the sales during the period. Because apparently, sometimes, no, a company is giving away points or giving away coupons just to sell more. All right? Famous example of customer loyalty programs, as we all know, will be the SM Advantage Card. Or another example will be Happy Plus in Jollibee. So this is part of financial accounting and reporting previously, right? 
the one that we are using no, in accounting customer loyalty programs is IFRIC number 13. But once again, IFRIC number 13 is no longer applicable. Ibig sabihin, starting January 1, 2018, we are now uh, required to use IFRS number 15. So ang ibig sabihin ngayon, when talking about customer loyalty programs, dapat nakabase na rin tayo sa five-step model na i-discuss natin later on. Okay? Next will be IFRIC number 15. So if we're talking about uh, agreements for the construction of real estate, IFRS 15 na rin po ang ating gagamitin. Next will be IFRIC 18, that's the transfer of assets from customers. And last will be SIC number 31, that's revenue barter transactions involving advertising services. Okay? Once again, starting January 1, 2018, these standards and interpretations are no longer valid. Ibig sabihin, okay, starting January 1, 2018, IFRS 15 na. I hope we're clear on that. Okay? Now, let's move on to the steps on recognizing revenue. Once again, as I said a while ago, meron na po tayong five-step model before we can recognize revenue here in IFRS number 15. Okay? So let's first enumerate those steps, and then afterwards, we will discuss those steps one by one, okay? In detail, syempre. Step number one is to identify the contract, right? So we should identify first the contract before uh, we can recognize revenue. So first, reminder of Sir Rain sa inyo, no? Okay? Revenue cannot be recognized, right, without a contract. Once again, lagi niyong tatandaan, revenue cannot be recognized without a contract. Later, we'll talk about the requirements before we can say that there is already a contract. And we, we will also talk about the uh, scenarios where in, even though these requirements are uh, are present in the problem, still, there will be no contract to exist. All right? Step number two is to identify the separate performance obligations. Later, we will also discuss that. Step three is to determine the transaction price. Step four is to allocate transaction price to the separate performance obligation. Meaning here in step four, after determining no, the transaction price and identifying the separate performance obligations, we are now required to allocate the transaction price determined in step number three to the separate performance obligations identified no, in step number two. Okay? And step number five is to recognize revenue when each performance obligation is satisfied. Okay? So let's start with step number one. Once again, step number one is to identify the contract. All right. So here, according to paragraph number 10 of IFRS number 15, a contract daw is an agreement. Again, a contract is an agreement between two or more parties no, that created enforceable rights and obligations. All right. Talking about enforceability, see to it no, that enforceability will be actually a matter of law. Once again, enforceability is a matter of law. So ang ibig sabihin, hindi na po diniscuss ni IFRS number 15, ulitin ko lang pagkakasulat, medyo malago, no? matter of law. So, ang ibig sabihin ngayon neto, IFRS 15 did not discuss anymore enforceability because once again, enforceability is a matter of law. So, ang ibig sabihin, to discuss or to know more about enforceability or to know more about enforceable contracts, you should study obligations and contracts. Actually, that is part of RFBT. Alright? So, ang sinasabi lang naman, me, paragraph number 10, right, contract daw will be or is an agreement between two or more parties that created enforceable rights and obligations. All right. So as we all know, contract is also defined no, in a law on obligation and contracts. But as you can see, iba yung definition dito. Once again, we're talking about IFRS 15 dito. So baka kasi bigla mo sabihin, sir, hindi ganyan dinefined yan sa obligation and contracts namin. All right. Once again, the discussion or the definition no, of contract is different sa discussion natin dito because here, right, nakafocus lang tayo sa accounting side ng transaction, right? RFBT kasi nakafocus siya, right, doon sa legal side ng transaction. Aluanag ba? Also, the requirements before a contract exists in RFBT is also different sa AFAR, right? Once again, before a contract will exist under RFBT, there are three requirements. What are those? Consent, object, and cause. All right. I will not dwell on those requirements. Hindi ko i-discuss yung mga yun because kukulangin na tayo sa time. So, ibig sabihin, accounting side lang ako. But here, in IFRS 15, see to it that those requirements are different because here, in IFRS number 15, lima 
ang ating requirements. Ulitin ko, in RFBT, COC lang. Consent, cost, and co uh, cost and object. But here in IFRS 15, here in AFAR, iba ang requirements. Okay? Meron tayong lima. So let's discuss this. Criteria to be met in order for a contract to exist for purposes of revenue recognition. And this is in accordance with IFRS number 15, paragraph number 9. All right? So first requirement is that the contract has a commercial substance. All right? So commercial substance is actually discussed, no? in another standard again. Sir, bakit ganun palipat-lipat ng standard? Ganun talaga eh. Alright? Dapat alam mong i-relate yung bawat standard, yung bawat concept na naaalala mo. Alright? So, commercial substance, dapat narinig nyo to under IAS number 16. That's the standard with regards to property, plant, and equipment. Isn't it? Kapag may exchange sa property, plant, and equipment, we can say that there is a commercial substance if we expect uh, the, 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 the cash flow right from the asset to significantly change. Once again, if after the exchange, nagbago significantly yung cash flows natin na ina-expect, say to it that there is commercial substance. Same thing here. All right? So the first requirement before a contract will exist is dapat daw may commercial substance. Right? If walang commercial substance yung transaction, always remember na wala po tayong contract na i-consider. And also, sabi ko nga kanina, without a contract, Revenue cannot be recognized, right? That's why it is so important, right, to know first whether there is a contract or wala. Okay? Now, number two. Number two will be the payment terms. The contract or the entity can identify the payment terms, right? So we should identify the payment terms because apparently that's the amount of revenue that we will recognize later on. So dapat kayang-kaya natin, we are able to determine how much will be the transaction price and how will this transaction price be paid because apparently dapat nakalagay din sa kontrata ano yung mga payment terms whether may discount ba to on installment ba to etc cetera, etc cetera. all right third requirement is that the parties to the contract have approved the contract actually ito yung isa sa mga requirements no ng contract natin which is the consent and kapag masasabi lang natin na may consent if and only if meron tayong meeting of minds. Remember meeting of minds? Ibig sabihin yan, tapos na tayo sa negotiation. Because there are chances no, na nagkakaroon muna ng negotiations. So until the, uh, the parties in the contract, sino ba yung mga parties sa kontrata? Buyer, seller lang yan. Tama ba? So not until the buyer and the seller has or have approved the contract, see to it, the contract will not exist. Sir, kahit na may consent, cost, and object, once again, iba po ito sa law. Right? Iba ito sa RFBT. So kahit na may consent, object, and cause, say to it na contract will still not exist if the parties to the contract did not approve the same. Okay? Number four is that the entity can identify no, each party's rights regarding goods or services to be rendered. So ano ba yung rights ng bawat parties natin? What are the rights of the seller? What are the rights of the buyer? Rights of the seller, of course, is to receive the consideration, is to receive the transaction price. Yun yung right niya. On the other hand, the right of the buyer is, of course, to receive the goods or to receive the rendering of services. Tama ba? So, dapat nakalagay din daw po yun sa contract. Right? The number five, it is probable that the entity will collect the consideration to which it will be entitled. So, dapat daw, probable yung chance Right, na marireceive natin yung consideration na kanina pa natin pinag-uusapan. Right? Once again, for the purpose of applying this standard, a contract will only exist if and only if nagko-comply siya sa limang requirements na to. Okay? Hopefully nakakasunod ka pa because theories pa lang to. Mamaya-maya, pupunta rin tayo sa problems ni. Right? Now, punta tayo doon sa dalawang dalawang scenario where in kapag present pareho, wala pa ring kontrata. Right? So according to paragraph number 12, no, for the purpose of applying IFRS number 15, situate that what? Situate that a contract does not exist if both, once again, no, if both of the following are true. Alright? What are those? Number one, the contract is unperformed. Anong ibig sabihin nun? Hindi pa nagbabayad si buyer or hindi pa nag-deliver or nagre-render ng goods si seller. So if the contract is still unperformed, there is a chance na wala pa rin kontrata. Okay? Then number two, both seller and the buyer 
can terminate the contract without penalty. So if the seller or the buyer can terminate the contract without any penalty and the contract is unperformed, see to it that the contract is still not in existence. And once again, if there is no contract, no revenue will be recognized later on. Okay? So ngayon, after discussing those theories, no, punta tayo sa notes all right, here sa step number one. So dito na tayo magsasolve because after these notes, we'll try to solve some problems. Pero kayang-kaya natin itong mga tayo. Right? So what are the notes na pinrepare ko dito? According to paragraph number 105 of IFRS number 15, performance of either party no, will give rise to a contract asset or liability. All right? So here, there is a chance na meron tayong tinatawag na contract asset or contract liability. The question is, kailan nagkakaroon no, ng contract asset? When do we recognize contract asset? And when do we recognize contract liability? Because it's important to know right, kung kailan nagkakaroon ng contract asset at kailan nagkakaroon ng contract liability. Right? Now, anong sabi ni paragraph 106? According to paragraph 106, if a customer pays or an entity has a right to an amount of consideration before, again, before, uh, before the entity transfer a good or service to the customer, the entity shall recognize contract liability. Word that in another way, if there is a performance already on the part of the, of the buyer, meaning nagbayad na si buyer, or required na siyang magbayad kay seller, and then apparently si seller hindi pa siya nag-deliver ng goods or hindi pa siya nagre-render ng services, see to it that according to paragraph 106, we are required to recognize a contract liability. Okay? Once again, if there is a performance already on the part of the buyer and no performance at all on the point of view of the seller, there will be a contract liability. Okay? On the other hand, according to paragraph 107 of the same standard, if an entity performs before the customer pays consideration or before payment is due, the entity shall recognize contract asset, no? excluding any amount presented as receivable. So later, we will discuss the difference between a contract asset and a receivable. But my point here, or yung point ko muna na gusto kong makuha nyo dito, is that if there is no payment yet, there is no performance yet on the point of view of the buyer, but there is already a delivery no? or there is already a rendering of services on the point of view of the seller, see to it, that contract asset on the other hand will be recognized. So if nag-perform si seller, si buyer naman yung hindi nag-perform, contract asset is actually recognized, right? And lastly, paragraph 109 of the same standard, sabi, ni, sabi dito, entity may use alternative descriptions no? other than contract asset or liability. Meaning contract asset or contract liability are actually what? Are actually just suggestive, suggestive in nature. Meaning, hindi required na ito na talagang gamitin natin. We are still allowed to use other account titles. Let's say, uh, 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 instead of contract liability, deferred revenue ang ginamit natin. An earned income ang ginamit natin. Allowed ba yun? Yes, that's allowed according to paragraph 109. Okay? So we can use other account titles Right? Instead of contract asset or contract liability according to paragraph 109. Okay? So para ma-apply natin lahat ng concepts na yan into the problems, let's try to solve this easy problem no, here in illustrative problem number one. So here in illustrative problem number one, on August 1, 2028, Ivana Company entered into a contract of sale with Alawi. All right? The contract is structured such that Ivana must deliver the goods. Kailan? Ivana must deliver the goods on right September 30, 2028. So there is a performance on the point of view of the seller on September 30, 2028. And Alawi, which is the buyer, must pay 80,000 kailan on October 31, 2028. The cost of the goods transfer is 65,000. So this is just an easy problem. This is just to illustrate no? paragraph 105 to 107 or to 109 of the standard. Okay, so the requirement here is to provide us the necessary journal entries on the following dates. Okay, will you start on August 1, 2028? So, nalagay ko dito, no? August 1, 2028. All right, so once again, the title of this standard is Revenue from Contracts with Customers. 
Sino ba yung may revenue? Yung may revenue po is the seller. That's why all throughout the discussion, we are on the shoes of the seller. Okay? Wala tayong pakialam dito kay buyer. Seller lang. Tinitignan natin. Yung anak. So on August 1, ano nangyari? On August 1, the, buy, uh, the seller and the buyer just entered into a contract, contract of sale. But apparently, there is no performance yet. Tama ba? Hindi pa nagpe-perform si buyer nor the, si seller on August 1. Kailan lang sila nag-perform? Si seller nag-deliver on September 30. Si buyer nagbayad on October 31. Ibig sabihin on August 1, if there is no performance yet, right, see to it that we don't have any contract asset nor contract liability yet. So no entry muna tayo. Very good. Now, apparently, on September 30, no, once again, on September 30, 2028, anong nangyari? On September 30, 2028, the cost of the goods trans ad on September 30, 2028, Ivana, which is the seller, delivered the goods. No? Okay? So apparently, there is a performance on the point of view of the seller because nagkaroon ng delivery, yet wala pang payment. And as discussed a while ago, if there is a performance on the point of view of the seller and apparently hindi pa nagbabayad si buyer, we should recognize contract asset. Maliwanag ba? And according to paragraph 109, we can use alternative descriptions. Okay? So here, on September 30, 2028, now we can debit what? We can debit contract asset. Again, we can debit contract asset or we can also use other account titles such as accounts receivable. So we can debit accounts receivable here equal to 80,000 pesos and then credit sales equal to 80,000 pesos. Another journal entry will be made if you are using the perpetual inventory method. What's that? That is to debit cost of goods sold and then to credit inventory equal to the cost of the goods sold. And that's equal to 65,000 pesos. So as you can see, since nag-render and nag-deliver na si seller, nag-perform na si seller, pero si buyer wala pang payment, nag-recognize tayo ng contract asset. Okay? And then apparently on October 31, 2028, According to the problem na, na binasa natin kanina, which is this, nagbayad na si uh, buyer. Again, nagbayad na si buyer. So if nagbayad na si buyer, pareho na silang nagperform. So if pareho na silang nagperform ngayon, we should now get recognized the contract asset. Why? Because contract asset can only be recognized if si seller lang yung nagpe-perform. So if both the parties did perform already the contract, si to it, na wala na dapat contract asset. So on October 31, we should now de-recognize the contract asset. That's why the journal entry here is to debit cash, then to credit contract asset or accounts receivable equal to 80,000 pesos. So these are the journal entries. Again, these are the journal entries for that illustrative problem. Okay? Hopefully, nagets naman yun. No? Now, puna tayo sa illustrative problem number two. Okay? So on August 1, 2028, Ivana Company entered into a contract of sale with Alawi pa rin. Actually, it's the same problem. The only difference is that the delivery of the goods will be on October 31, and then the payment of consideration happened on September 30. All right, so pinagbaliktad ko. This time, September 30, si buyer ang nag-perform, si seller hindi pa. Okay, so here, see to it that on August uh, 1, 2028, still, we have no entry because no performance yet on that date. Okay? But on September 30, 2028, see to it na nag-perform na si buyer. So if there is a performance on the point of view of the buyer and apparently no performance yet on the point of view of the seller, once again, we are allowed to, rec or, I mean, we are required to recognize contract liability. But according to paragraph 109, ulit-ulitin lang natin, we can use alternative descriptions. Okay? So here, we will recognize contract liability. So debit what? Debit cash because we receive cash equal to 80,000. Then we'll credit contract liability or we can also use another description on another account title such as deferred revenue account or unearned revenue account. That's equal to 80,000 pesos. All right? Now, on October 31, nag-perform na rin si seller. So, wala na dapat contract liability because contract liability is only recognized if no performance yet on the point of view of the seller. So, if there is already, we should now de-recognize the same account. 
All right? So here, that your net entry now will be to debit contract liability or to debit deferred revenue account equal to 80,000. And this time, will credit sales equal to 80,000 because nagkaroon na ng delivery. Another journal entry nga will be made if we are using the perpetual inventory method. Right? So that is to debit cost of goods sold, then to credit inventory equal to 65,000 pesos. Okay? So that's illustrative problem number two. And that's uh, the, the, those are the problems that I prepared to illustrate the recognition of contract asset or contract liability. Medyo ano lang, no? medyo normal naman na ito mga to ginagawa na natin yan previously. It's just that it is not yet written. So ang ginawa ni IFRS 15, tinake into writing lang niya, pinut into writing lang niya yung mga bagay na normally na natin ginagawa. Because even without IFRS number 15, isn't it we are already doing these entries. Okay? So that's step number one. Okay? Now, as I said a while ago, contract asset is different from receivable. So let's now differentiate, no? Again, let's now differentiate contract asset and receivable. Okay? So according to paragraph 107 no, of, uh, of IFRS number 15, see to it that contract asset is actually the entity's right to consideration. Again, contract asset is the entity's right to consideration. Then, anong sabi ni paragraph 108? According to paragraph number 8, uh, receivable is the entity's right to consideration. Parehong-pareho. Sir, bakit ganun? Pareho lang pala. Hindi. May pinagkaiba yan. Alright? Anong pinagkaiba po nila? Well, according to paragraph 107, contract asset is the entity's right to consideration in exchange for goods or services transferred to a customer. Pero sabi niyo, paragraph 108, receivable, on the other hand, is the entity's right to consideration that is what? That is conditional. So, sir, possible po na nag-deliver na tayo ng goods, na nag-render na tayo ng service, yet the right to consideration is still conditional? Yes, that's possible. Let's say ganito, no? Let's say I am required to deliver, uh, let's say, 100 pieces of, let's say, cell phone. If I am required to deliver 100 pieces of cell phone, and the buyer or you as a buyer will only pay me once I delivered the, the last piece of cell phone or iPhone, say to it that what? Say to it that I do only have the right to receive that consideration after the delivery of the 100 item. Okay? So hanggat hindi ko pa nadideliver yung last item, still, hindi pa ako, alright? Hindi pa ako para bang required or hindi pa ako allowed mag-recognize ng receivable. So let me clarify that once again. Pareho lang sila, kung titignan natin, it's just that their only difference is that contract asset is what? Contract asset is conditional. Again, contract asset is conditional. On the other hand, receivable is actually what? Receivable is actually unconditional. Okay? So we are not allowed to recognize a receivable until the, the right to consideration is already unconditional. So para mas magets natin yan, let's try to go here in this illustrative problem. So sabi dito, on January 1, 2028, PICPA enters into a contract with iCare Accountancy Review for the sale of two mirrorless camera for 50,000 pesos each. The contract requires one camera to be delivered kailan on February 14, 2028 and states that the payment for the delivery of the first camera is what? The payment for the delivery of the first camera is conditional. Again, that is conditional. Conditional on the delivery of the second camera. So sir, nung ibig sabihin ngayon, kahit na na-deliver na yung first camera on Feb 14, still the payment is conditional. Meaning, wala pa rin pong right kasiguruduhan na marireceive yan nung seller. Ano ba? So here, the second camera is only delivered on July 31, 2028. Then the payment for the two cameras was received on September 8, 2028. So the requirement here will be to provide the necessary journal entries on the following dates. Right? Obviously, on January 1, there will be no entry. Why no entry? Because on January 1, wala pang delivery, wala rin payment. Right? So if no performance, once again, if the contract is still unperformed, situate na wala po tayong journal entry. There will only be journal entry, entry if and only if there is a partial or there is already a full performance of contract. Lanag, ngayon punta tayo sa Feb 
14. Ano nangyari nung Feb 14? On Feb 14, nagkaroon ng delivery. Alright? So, ibig sabihin, kung nagkaroon ng delivery, we should credit sales already equal to 50,000 pesos. But apparently here, we are not allowed, once again, we are not allowed to recognize a receivable. Hindi ko pa pwede dito i-debit ang accounts receivable. Sir, bakit naman? Because according to what right, uh, we've read a while ago, what we've discussed a while ago, according to paragraph 108, we can only recognize a receivable if and only if the right to consideration is unconditional. So since according to the problem, the payment for the delivery of the first is conditional on the delivery of the second, camera, see to it that what? See to it that the payment is still conditional as of February 14. That's why as of February 14, the correct account title that we should debit here is still the contract asset account. So debit contract asset. Okay? When did the second camera, camera deliver? That is on July 31. So on July 31, there is a delivery of another camera. Okay? So this time, if na-deliver na yung second camera, the payment is now unconditional. Once again, once the condition is fulfilled, the payment will become unconditional. Luanag? So ibig sabihin ngayon, we are now allowed to recognize accounts receivable since the payment is now unconditional. Okay? There are already two cameras delivered. So kung dalawang camera na nadi-deliver, we should debit accounts receivable equal to 100,000 pesos. Okay? Then apparently, we will credit sales, of course, only equal to 50,000, because only one camera is delivered on July 31. Then apparently, since the payment is already unconditional, we can now derecognize, again, we can now derecognize the contract asset account. So, credit contract asset to derecognize, the contract asset recognized last, right, February 14. Okay? Then last but not the least, journal entry on September 8th, that's the payment. So, on September 8th, situated the journal entry will just be to debit cash, then to credit accounts receivable equal to 100,000 pesos. So, these are, again, these are the journal entries for that illustrative problem. Okay? So after discussing that, let's now move on here no, sa contract modifications. Alright? So contract modifications according to paragraph number 18 is a change. Again, contract modification is a change in the scope or price or both no, of a contract that is approved by the parties to the contract. So sir, can you give us an example? Let's say originally, right, the original agreement is just the delivery of 10,000 pieces of, let's say, iPhone. All right? Apparently, after the delivery of few items, let's say 2,000 items, say to it that the agreement is changed to 12,000. So instead of 10,000, naging 12,000 na. So if there is a change no, in the scope or change in the price of the contract, say to it that that is called contract modification. Okay? So, contract modification example according to IFRS 15 or change order, variation, or amendments. All right. So, let's now move on to the accounting of contract modification. Okay. So, here there are two scenarios. Now. First scenario is that contract modification creates new contract. And the second scenario is that contract modification modifies the existing contract. All right. So, kailan gagamitin yung una? Kailan gagamitin yung pangalawa? Let's discuss it. So, start tied It's a recognition of new contract, which is the first one, ha? which is the uh, which means that the contract modification will create a new contract. Okay? So, if the contract modification no, right, uh, complies with these two conditions according to paragraph 20, say to it that we should recognize a new contract. Once again, there are two conditions before we can use or we can treat this contract modification under the first scenario, okay? So what are these conditions? First condition is that the scope of the contract increases because of the addition of promised goods or services that are what? That are distinct. Again, the first condition is that the scope of the contract increases because of the, ad of the addition of promised goods or services that are distinct, okay? So now, para ma-discuss ko properly yung word na distinct, let me jump no, to paragraph number 27. 
All right? So situate that according to paragraph num number 27, a good or service that is promised to a customer is this thing, again, is this thing, if both of the following criteria are met. Okay? So there are two criteria before we can see that a performance obligation is actually this thing. Okay? What are those? First criteria is that the customer can benefit from the good or service. Then second is that the entity is promised to transfer no? the good or service to the customer is separately, again, is separately identifiable from the other promises in the contract. Or that in another way, all right, the, 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 the performance obligation must not be related nor dependent to the other performance obligations in the contract. Let's have some example. Let's say here we have a product. We have four products in a contract, right? What are the products in a contract? This is a computer set. Again, this is a computer set, okay? This is the monitor. This is the CPU, right? This is the mouse. And then this is the keyboard. With me? So now, hear me out. If, once again, if, right? The monitor can be sold separately. Again, if the monitor can be sold separately without selling the other performance obligations in the contract, see to it that the monitor is considered distinct. Okay? Now, if the CPU can be sold as well without selling the monitor, without selling the keyboard, without selling the mouse, see to it that the CPU is also treated as distinct or as a separate performance obligation. But if the keyboard and the mouse cannot be sold separately, meaning what, uh, in order for you to sell the keyboard, you should also sell the mouse, see to it that what? See to it that these are dependent. And if these are if the, if these two performance obligations are dependent, they are not distinct. So even though dalawa sila, we will treat them as a single performance obligation. So ibig sabihin dito, kahit na apat yung required natin i-deliver sa customer, si to it na tatlo lang. Again, here we only have three performance obligations, right? Because once again, the keyboard and the mouse are not distinct. Okay? So once again, we can only say that a performance obligation is distinct if and only if this performance obligation is not related nor dependent no, to the other performance obligations in the contract. Meaning, we can sell this performance obligation uh, without selling the other performance obligations in the contract. Okay? So now, what's the second condition? First condition, once again, the additional promised goods or services are distinct. We already know what we're saying on this thing. So, we're going to the second condition. The price of the contract increases no, by an amount of consideration that reflects the entity's stand-alone selling prices of the additional promised goods or services and any appropriate adjustments to that price. Right? So, dapat daw yung right to the consideration right, uh, reflects the additional promised goods or services to the contract. Right? So para mas magets natin yan, let's now move on here in this illustrative problem. Okay? So here, I care Corporation has a contract to sell 50,000 boxes of PS5 to a customer no, for 10 million or 200 pesos per boxes over a three-month period. Okay? After the delivery of 30,000 boxes, so if 50,000 boxes yan in total, and then apparently, 30,000 boxes pa lang na deliver meron pang remaining 20,000 boxes. Okay? IKR modifies the contract by promising to deliver additional 10,000 boxes of PS5 for an additional 1.8 million or 180 pesos per boxes. Okay? Which is the standalone selling price of the products at the time of contract modification. Dito nagmamatter to eh. Iker regularly sells the products separately. So if Iker regularly sells the products separately, always remember that the products or the performance obligations are said to be distinct. And if the performance obligation or the additional performance obligation is distinct, situate that what? Situate that this problem or this contract modification falls under the first scenario. Okay? So what are the requirements? Requirement number one is to determine the total revenue that is to be recognized after, once again, please take note of the word after here, huh? 
after the modification. Okay? So here, once again, no, based on the first contract on the or, or on the original performance obligation, we still have 20,000 boxes. So we are still required to deliver 20,000 boxes because the original agreement says that 50,000 boxes must be delivered and only 30,000 boxes are delivered so far. So 20,000 pa natitira. Selling price or the uh, transaction price of these boxes is 200 pesos each. So times 200 pesos, how much is this? 20,000 times 200, this is actually equal to 4 million pesos. Okay? Now, pag-usapan natin yung additional performance obligation. So the additional performance obligation contains 10,000 boxes and apparently the, uh, the, 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 the transaction price of, the, of these 10,000 boxes is actually equal to 180 per box. Okay? So times 180 pesos, this is equal to 1.8 million pesos. Okay? So maybe nagtataka ka, sir, bakit kaya 20,000 boxes na lang? Bakit hindi 50,000? E total revenue po ang tinatanong. Well, ang tinatanong dito is the revenue after contract modification. Meaning, after the contract modification, we are now only para bang liable to deliver the 20,000 remaining plus the 10,000 additional PO. Meaning, the revenue pertaining to the 30,000 boxes of uh, PS5 already delivered right, is recognized already on the date of delivery. So if na-recognize na yun, hindi na natin yung i-recognize pa ulit. You with me? That's why only 20,000 is considered here. Right? So requirement number one, our final answer now, with regards to the requirement, that is the total revenue after, once again, after modification will be equal no, to 5.8 million pesos. Once again, 5.8 million, final answer, requirement number one. Okay? Requirement number two tayo. Determine the revenue that must be recognized if ICARE delivers 5,000 boxes of PS5 to satisfy the original contract. So hear me out, guys. Here, since we recognize in your contract, there are two contracts that are in existence. Tama ba? There are two contracts that are existing. The original contract and the new contract. You with me? Now, there will be no problem if right, there is uh, a complete or full satisfaction of the performance obligations. Meaning, if we deliver 30,000 boxes of PS5, uh, the revenue that will be recognized will be 5.8 million. Walang problema doon. Maliwanag. So there is a problem kapag nagkaroon ng partial fulfillment. What do I mean by partial fulfillment? Partial fulfillment means that uh, we only delivered a certain number of PS5. We did not deliver the full amount or the total PS5 that we have to deliver. Right? So if there is only a delivery of 5,000 boxes of PS5, sito it na kailangan mo munang malaman kung ano ba yung iyong sinasatisfy. Are you satisfying the original contract or are do you intend to satisfy the new contract by delivering these 5,000 boxes? Sir, why do I need to know whether we are satisfying the original contract or the new contract? Well, you need to know that because apparently the selling price of the original contract is not the same to the selling price of the new contract. Tama ba? 200 po, yung original contract, 180 lang yung new contract. So here, according to the second requirement, we intend to satisfy the original contract. So if that's the case, see to it now that we'll multiply this by 200 pesos because the selling price of the uh, original performance obligation is 200 pesos per PS5. That's why requirement number two, 5,000 times 200, or that's equal to 1 million pesos, will be our final answer. So requirement number two, 1 million pesos is our final answer. Okay? And last but not the least, punta tayo sa requirement number three. Requirement number three, determine the revenue that must be recognized if ICARE delivers 5,000 boxes of PS5 to satisfy the new performance obligation. So if, if we intend to satisfy the new performance obligation, right, see to it that the selling price or the multiplier here will be equal to 180 pesos instead. With me? And then 5,000 times 180, see to it that 900,000 will now be our final answer 
tier in requirement number three. So that's the reason why it is so important. No? Again, that's the reason why it is so important uh, for us to know whether we intend to satisfy the original performance obligation or the new performance obligation. Because the revenue that will be recognized on that partial fulfillment will be different. Diba na ba? So sir, what if the problem is silent? Baka itanong mo yan, no? Hindi po sinabi ng problem. Well, apparently, wala pa pong agreement with regards to that. Wala rin pong sinasabi ang IFRS number 15 pagdating sa bagay na yan. So, we can expect for now, right, that the problem will tell you kung ano ba dapat ang kanyang sinasatisfy. Okay? So that is the first scenario here in contract modification. Okay? Now, punta tayo sa second scenario. That is the modification of the existing contract. So if we will only modify the existing contract, see to it that after contract modification, there will only be one contract. Once again, kanina, dun sa sinagutan natin, after contract modification, there are two contracts. Because we are actually what? We are actually recognizing a new contract. So after the contract modification, there will now be two contracts. The original contract and the new contract. That's why if there is a partial fulfillment of obligation, you should know first whether you are satisfying the original contract or the new contract because apparently dalawang kontrata mo dito. Pero here, sa second scenario natin dito sa contract modification, after the contract modification, there will only be one contract. Aluanag ba? We will not recognize here a new contract. Aluanag ba yun? So here, according to paragraph 21B, an entity shall account for the existing contract modification as if it were part of the existing contract if the remaining goods or services are not this thing. Once again, if the remaining goods or services are not this thing, we should consider the additional performance obligation as if it is actually part of the original contract. You with me? So para mas magets natin yan, let's move on here in illustrative problem number four. I think this is the fourth problem or the fifth problem. Okay, let's nice solve natin. So here, I care corporation actually, the problem is just the same. I just changed the last paragraph. Sir, ano ba yung last paragraph? This time, I care does not regularly sells the product separately. So if I care does not regularly sells the products separately, the performance obligation are now not the same, right? But always remember na if tatanungin tayo sa number one, determine the total revenue that is to be recognized after the modification, our final answer here will still be equal to 5.8 million. Sir, bakit 5.8 million pa rin? Because uh, whether it falls under scenario number one or scenario number two, still, the total revenue is the same. So, sir, anong pinagbago? Lang, scenario one at scenario two mo. Well, ang pinagbago nila is kapag nagkaroon ng partial fulfillment. Right? Because here, in scenario number two, if there is no recognition of in your contract, we should compute for a blended price. Okay? We should compute, compute for the new price. So, sir, paano yan i-compute? Blended price is actually equal, no? to the revenue to be recognized, no revenue to be recognized after contract modification divided by the total performance obligation. Okay? Revenue to be recognized after the contract modification is 5.8 million as computed a while ago. Ito yun, no? 5.8 million. Okay? Then total performance obligations natin because as if the additional performance obligation nga is part of the new contract is equal to 20 plus 10, or that's equal to 30,000 boxes pa. Okay? So I'll divide 5.8 million by 30,000 boxes and apparently, ang makukompute dito is how much? This is equal to 193 pesos. Okay? Then apparently, requirement number two, determine the revenue that must be recognized if ICARE delivers 5,000 boxes of PS5. So if there is a delivery of 5,000 boxes of PS5, See to it na wala kang pagpipilian dito. Kanina, sa first scenario, dalawang kontrata ang nag -e exist That's why we need to choose. Maluanag? Pero dito, since isang kontrata lang ang nag -e exist after the contract modification, wala tayong pagpipilian. Kung isa lang ang pinagpipilian mo, hindi ka talaga namimili. Nagigets mo ba ako? That's why here, if there is a delivery or partial delivery, 
C to it that what? C to it that will use the blended price to compute the revenue. That's why here our final answer is 5,000 times 193, or that's equal to 965,000. Okay? So let me just clarify this. No? If the contract modification falls under the first scenario, you need to know kung ano ang sinasatisfy mo right, doon sa partial delivery or partial right, satisfaction of obligation. Is it the original contract or the new contract? Because apparently, there are two contracts na nag exist after the contract modification. But under the second scenario, since isang kontrata lang ang nag exist after the contract modification, we just modified no, the existing contract. Okay. Wala kang pinagpipilian, wala kang pagpipilian. And so therefore, blended price ang ating gagamitin to compute the revenue. So that's contract modification and that's the end of step number one.